Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about is a risk condition thing we got to work on with you. So this, you know, I'm super tan this time of year, so I kind of fade away there on the screen, but there's a risk condition, a left wrist that is very, it's vertical, meaning that it's not turned, but it's bent back upon itself. Can you guys see that? Pretty clear? Okay, maybe it's best to look up there, I don't know, wherever you see better. You know, and there's a, a right hand where the right wrist is pretty flat. I'm in a position now where something can go from bent to flat. Bent to flat, okay? If I had a stick, I'd go whap, whap, right? And I could smack something hard that way. You with me? So as I make this motion of, as I'm making my golf swing, hitting a shot, like right now, I've traded values, guys. I went from my cuppy left wrist, flat right wrist, to pretty much an impact condition where my left wrist is flat my right wrist is bent. So as I'm going to the top, I've traded the value. I've traded that yellow, the bent left is now a bent right. The, the, the bent left is now flat. You see that? What's your name, Mike? Oh. They were. They were here. Yeah. They're here yesterday. Aaron might have them. So now I've got something that we're going to put you guys through this feeling that can really mash through a golf ball and help our speed because both of you guys need speed need to hit it farther. 80-something miles an hour at the driver, 80-something miles an hour at the driver, okay? You can get up there a little bit more. So you got to use what you know, you're know you strong at to help you hit it far. And I'm not saying we're not going to have contribution from unwinding in the body. You are. Okay, but you got to be able to use your hands properly by getting them on the club properly. Okay, that'll help your wedging as well. So let me explain. I'll come on up on the mat, both you guys. And then we'll come back here and take a look at some swings. So both you guys, come, up, come on up here. You can put your glove on if you want. We're not going to hit a shot. I'm just going to kind of manipulate your hands a little bit. So Frank, yep, Don right here. Great. And I'll take the club just for a sec. Pretend like you're going to hit a golf ball, though. Kind of give me that, you know, stand over it like you're going to hit one and put your hands together. Okay, good. Now I'm going to take this left hand and I'm going to show you what it feels like to be on a grip properly. So see how that's bent back? Yeah. Wow is right. Because what a lot of people, now you can relax for a second. What a lot of people want to do, you guys stay there is they want to have this kind of wrist a little flatter because, man, that feels easy. I can just stand in here and that, yeah, I'm set. That looks great. But you really don't have good reciprocating hands at this point to smash it. One, the handle's too high. You're not in a position where, and it's not about strong. It's my wrist isn't turned to the right. My wrist is, in fact, very vertical. I just have it in a situation where I have some opportunity to go from bent to flat. I have some opportunity to use a little bit of that potential smack in conjunction with unwinding, okay? Now you go, man, I don't really want to think, I don't want to be handsy when I golf. Well, I don't really feel like I'm handsy when I juggle, but I'm handsy because you got to learn how to use your hands, okay? So, is this yours or is this, okay, stand right here, face me. Let's get this left wrist a little bit on there. Good, good, grip it, grip it, grip it, good. Awesome. Let's have you grab a club. Here you go. Let me get this wrist on here. Good. Now I'm bending that back and keeping it pretty darn neutral, okay? So if I take this down to where I need it to be, then I leave you here. How are you going to get your right hand on it? Go ahead and get your right hand on it without changing it. You interlock. Lovely. That's a nice pair of mitts. Now the only thing I would do differently, Don, is to get this lifeline a little bit more cuddly on that thumb. Now you've got some smashy hands, okay? You've got some strong looking hands that can hit it, and so do you. Okay, you with me? Dino might. Well, the face is. Here, no, it's not. See what I mean? Yeah, you can change that. So now, come on over to your hot seats, fellas. Thank you. Have a seat, or stand there and watch TV, whatever you like. And, and this is the reason I'm picking on you. Because I'm looking at two very non-extended left hands. Do you see what I mean? That's why I pulled you guys together. Because we like pairing people up to have the same thing. 
I want to see you guys speed up because I want. I know you're strong. I just don't see the speed because you don't really have your hands in an advantageous position, right? So you got to be handsy until you can forget about being handsy. Meaning, you know, right now there's a lot of rolling and cupping in your golf swing, Don. You see what I mean? Your left arm forearm rolls, and then you take on the cup. So here is the roll, and here is the cup, okay? And Frank? You don't really roll it as much. You try not to, which I can appreciate. But now there's not much. There's, both of you guys don't really have much swing length to really smash it from. Okay? So as we drag both of you guys through impact, yeah, so there's a body that kind of stalls, right? There's a, 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 there's a subconscious element here where the back of this genius brain of yours is figuring out how precisely to bend these elbows so that you don't stick the club in the ground. You with me? Okay. And so if you didn't, you know, somebody probably told you to keep your head down at some point, and you're trying to keep your head down, right? It's the last thing I'm ever going to tell you. Okay, I'm, we're going to build a nice math model and some really good hands and learn how to hit it. Okay, so if I come back in here, and then let's take take Don to the bottom. Don, you got a pretty good swing, really. I just think you're kind of giving up. Say your hands have kind of come apart. If we look at this one on the left, and I zoom in a little bit, your hands really aren't a, they're not a union. You know, they've kind of come apart, guys. So with both of you guys, let me get that back in frame here a little bit better. And I kind of work through here. You guys are going to, there's a union of hands on the right. There's a bent left wrist and a flat right, okay? And as I kind of go into kind of hitting here, See, my hands are still pretty union. They're pretty nice unity there, aren't they? All right? But what was what was cupped at a dress is flattish going through an extension. I'm not trying like, a wrist's job, guys, is, is to have this motion. At a dress, it's cuppy. During the backswing, it flattens. During the downswing, it actually bows a little bit. Into impact, it flattens. And post-impact, it throws hard. Okay, so that overtaking, that's, how we're, that's what we're trying to teach you guys. Let's get the lead hand on properly. Let's build it at the top properly, and then will teach you guys how to have it as a power source, not something that kind of holds you back. Questions from both of you. What do you, but Martin, but I've heard this, I've heard that. Anything you want to throw at me? Oh, and I know, and you know, the amazing thing too is that you people come to my golf school, play golf forever, and they never, and I'd say 70%, so you're in the majority, have never really utilized that perfect grip or the most functional grip. It works, it's just not, not highly functional, okay? So, Mr., you're first on the mat. So, when you guys see this video, naturally, it'll be this video in both your training spaces, just because. It's uh, it'll be good to kind of for you guys to kind of play off each other a little bit. All right, so come on in here. Let me build this. And so that's super comfy, right? And again, it's not about turning. It's about you learning how to do this. Relax for a second, and let me take this, and let me bend it back. And I know that feels, and that's going to put a lot of stress in those muscles, isn't it? So tomorrow, you know what muscles you're going to feel? the back of that forearm, because the back of that forearm bends that wrist. And you know what everybody says? Everybody says this, but Martin, shouldn't I have like loosey-goosey hands? And I say, yeah, my hands feel loosey-goosey to me, but is that muscle tell you they're loosey-goosey? Muscle, you know what I mean? We'd, if we weren't casually muscular in certain spots, we'd, we'd be a blob on the floor, right? Okay, so if I took that wrist of yours and I got it here, and we gripped it, now you got a perfect left hand, and then I took it to where it kind of needs to be, and maybe scored the face a sliver and got the handle a little lower. Maybe you got to back up a tick, okay? And now you put your right hand on, okay? And you pair that lifeline onto that thumb, good. And so see how you're trying to, and that handles down a little bit more. There you go. Now you have this ability to go like this, and schwack. And this is what a through swing would look like. 
See how that's a little cuppy on that side? But it would be a little bowy on this side. It'd be a little bowy on this side. And guess what? It would look like an impact, sort of flattish. As the weight of the club's overtaken it, it looks a little cuppy-ish. You see what I mean? See how that, it, it's got to have, you got to be able to go, whew. And if I took a picture of you at impact, it would look like, but as in doing so, there's this motion that has to have mobility in it in conjunction with pivot. Yeah, totally. But if you start off like this, you're taking a lot of your power, just wasting it because you don't have the ability to feel. Yeah, you can't use it, right? You're both strong. We just got to get you being strong in the right place. Does that make sense? So here's your, you know, you're going to, like physically, that's why that muscle probably is like that, just because I've, you know, had to bend my left wrist back so that I can take my left wrist. And here's impact, guys. Watch. Look at how fast you kind of get into impact. There's about impact right here. Because what was flat is now bent, right? And then and it's not it's not sticks. Um, I used to think golf machine, they'd have you believe it was kind of like once it was flat, it stayed flat. But it's not. My measuring stuff tells me that all these good players have this dynamic event. And the ball, when I say that sound, it's because this bowed thing is flattening, boom, and then extend, and then cupping like mad on the through swing. Okay, like DJ goes like this at the top. He doesn't hit it like this. He hits it like this. You see what I mean? Yeah, massive whip, but you got to set that left hand in per correctly to do it. Now it's going to feel weird, and you're going to resist me. I get it. Okay, because you can't help it. It's just how you've been, right? If you need another Band-Aid for that little thumb of yours, you might get ahead of the game. Give me that hand. Get that, you know. Resistance is futile. That's right. There you go. Love that show. Get that right hand on there. Cuddle that thumb. Good, good, good. Good. Hip hinge, stick your butt out to get that club down to the ground. Move your feet that way a little bit. Now you look like now you look like you could absolutely smash it. Now hold on one sec. Or miss it. Do whatever. On a three, two, one, go ahead and hit one. Okay? Yeah, you missed. Okay, and that's what I would expect, right? Something that vastly different. Now, you're gonna learn how not to kind of overroll this piece on the way back. You're gonna learn the whip of this. Okay. So that's what, and it's going to be, that's why we get you for three days. You're going to suffer a little bit. And you're going to hit a couple of good ones. You're going to go, wow, that was pretty good. You're not going to be able to do it very often. But you're going to start to go, ooh, that felt good. See what I mean? That's what we want. And you'll do one good one, and then two bad ones, and three bad ones, and another good one, then maybe two good ones, and then three bad ones. And then you'll start to get in a trend that's better. Make sense? Coming up, Frank. So here's how you practice this, right? Just kind of feel. There's a vertical wrist, not a turned wrist. I don't want this, right? I want a vertical wrist, but bend your hand back. Make a, and bend it back and make a fist. Yeah. Stylish fist, a golfer fist. Good. That kind of goes in front of you. Good. See if you can't grip that thing a little farther down the grip. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Slide this thumb a little bit more that way. This thumb's got to be... So, so, I don't want to see the thumb way down here. See what I mean? So, the thumb, yeah, a little bit closer to the hand. And notice how you almost need to have this participation by the index finger, and that'll help you interlock or overlap or whatever you do with your right hand, okay? So, I'm going to take that, and you're going to grip it. You got it? Good. That's the feeling right there. Because now, you hold that for a sec, okay? Let me be a right hand for you. I'm going to be a right hand. There's a right hand. And you want to interlock. I don't want to interlock. I don't like interlocking, okay? Because inter everybody does this to interlock. They go way too deep, and they can't really get their right, their right hand on in this perfect spot. So now you twisted that face a bit too shut. But now here's power. Watch. You see what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, and now when you unwind yourself, start to unwind your pelvis, blam. You see what I mean? Yep. You getting what I'm cooking? Good, good, good. Okay. So 
Let's see, that would be bent low. Very good. Club would be here. Perfecto. Put that right hand on if you interlock. That's fine. Awesome. Okay, hang on a sec. Good, go ahead and smash one for me. Okay, good try. Feels super awkward, I get it. Come on over. Good, there you go. Grips are looking better, boys. I like it. Okay, you both laid the sod over it because you don't quite know what to do from here. Right? You're trying to stay down still. You're going to learn how to not stay down. You're going to learn how to... Why would you ever want to stay down if you don't have room to stay down? You want to learn how to let your left shoulder go this way. Up. While your right shoulder goes this way. Down. Okay. Dawn looks good. Pretty darn, and both of you kind of have the same, that's why I kind of paired you both up, right? Because take a look, if, I, if you take a look at that, you know, while something's coming down, everything about me, watch my legs, are straightening. I'm getting taller, my left shoulder's getting farther away from the ground. Club's the only thing still going down. That's the only thing still going down. It's going down to the bottom, overtaking and going up to the top, Okay. So you'll never hear me tell you to stay down. I may tell you to side bend more. I may, t you know what I mean. I may, but I'm never going to tell you stay down because staying down is why golfers really struggle because they have the misbelief that that this is important. Want to see a trick shot? Watch this. I will top it up into the ceiling or thereabouts. Okay. I'm going to stay down. Watch. Well, I didn't top it up into the ceiling, but I stayed down and I topped it. How did I top it? I topped it because I know exactly how to separate my elbows. But I don't want to separate my elbows. I want to have long elbows, but I want to also have these hands that can go and smack it. All right? Look, I'm keeping my eye on you two 14-year-olds. Don't be trouble. All right? Give me some knuckles. Go to work. You got it.